Good Wednesday morning. Welcome to Begin the Word. Today we'll be looking at Titus chapter 1, verse number 5. For this reason I left you in Crete, that you should set in order the things that are lacking, and appoint elders in every city as I commanded you. As we're getting into the body of the letter, last time we looked at the introduction, we saw that this is Paul, the apostle, writing to his son, Titus, to encourage him in his work that we'll begin to look at today. We want to remember this was written in hope, in confidence of eternal life, in a surety of the resurrection of Jesus. That's the context, that's the mindset that this is written towards. And there's certain goals that Paul wants to make sure are hit, and that is doctrine or the things the true facts, the teaching that accords with godliness, which we'll call good works or good activities, godly behavior of all manner. Paul's going to be completely obsessed throughout the book with making sure these two things happen, doctrine and good works amongst the people of God as they fulfill the vision of who God wants them to be. And so Paul has entrusted and he's empowered this man, Titus, his true son in the faith, to be able to bring this about specifically on the island of Crete. He says, this is the reason I left you. So last time we saw the mindset or the big goals, and now we're going to get kind of the tactical, specific things that Titus needs to do. Now let's talk about this island of Crete here for a second. I hope you'll forgive my drawing because it's not very great. But if you remember, we've got an area like here of, of what the Bible calls Asia, and then we've got Judea. So we've got Judea here, and then we've got Egypt, and then we've got Asia up here, and then we've got uh, maybe you might say the the Aegean area or Greece, and then there's an island kind of down here, or the Peloponnesus, and then we've got Rome over here, Rome over here as well with maybe uh, uh, an island like Cyprus in this area, and Crete is going to be right in the middle here. Crete is right in the middle, and it is, in fact, the last island as you sail from, from Athens over here all the way around to Rome. It's kind of your last place, so if you're going you're gonna to stop, there's a good chance that Crete is going to be a place that you stop. So as you look at this, we see this, Paul stops here in, in Acts 27 on his journey to Rome. It's the last major stop where you, place where you can stop in that area, all right? So this is a really central location. It'd be a natural last stopping point before you hit the the long voyage on the open sea. That means a lot of people are going to be coming through Crete. A lot of people are going to be coming through Crete. And so it becomes today like we might think of as a crossroads of major interstates. You know, you have a, a large town, a large city. Part of the reason cities get large is because they're naturally where a lot of people are going through and things get set up there. And so we, we imagine this scenario of the things that Paul has about the concern of the gospel going forward. An island like Crete could be a major platform, a major foothold for all sorts of people who are traveling through. Who knows what could happen from there? Because a lot of people are going to travel through Crete, and a lot of people have the chance to hear the gospel as they come through there. Further, as people are traveling, gospel preachers maybe from Jerusalem or from cities in Asia like Ephesus or or Antioch over here in Syria or um, cities in Galatia, as people would be traveling through um, gospel workers and, and Christians— they would have a stopping place where they could go in and, and rest and work and get and receive hospitality and things like that. So thriving Christian communities on this island could be a major tactical strategic advantage for the church. Now we can't know Paul's exact intention. It may just be as simple as he sends him there because there's honest people who want to hear the gospel. Regardless, we can't know, as we say, his mind, but we do know that a robust work on the island of Crete would have a lot of advantages for the church and its ability to move the gospel forward for the glory of God. All right, so you can see those advantages here and why Crete is not just some random place. It's got a lot of importance with it. And so Titus is left here to stabilize the churches in Crete and to bring them to maturity. Notice he gives him two charges here. He says the setting in order the things that are lacking. This kind of is thing number one. And then appointing elders is thing number two. So let's talk about this thing number one, setting things in order. What does that mean? Well, it means to shore up to shore up or to bring to completion, to bring to maturity. If you read in Acts chapter 14, 
Acts chapter 14, Paul was traveling in this area here in Galatia, and as they travel through here um, with Barnabas, they preach the gospel in that region, and then they travel back through and visit those churches once again. They strengthen the faith of the saints, and they taught them as well, and they appointed elders in those cities. And so you can see a close parallel here with Acts chapter 14, verse number 21 through 23, as Paul and Barnabas' work is modeled here in the work of Titus. That setting in order is to address the problems of the congregation that hinder it from being mature and functioning, that hinder it from being mature and functioning. That could be things like its governance and its organization. That could be things like its false teaching, the prevalence of people saying things that are against the doctrine of Christ that don't lead to godliness. It could be things like family life getting out of control and being inappropriate. It could be things like an understanding of hope. It could be their relationship to outsiders and people outside the church is what we mean by that. It could be their understanding of the gospel in general. It could be the need to rebuke people who are Christians who are good-hearted but have just really gotten off track. It could be the need to do good works, as we've mentioned before. You may be like, well, why are you writing these things on here? Well, it's exactly because these are the things that Titus is going to focus on. We're going to see these themes again and again in the book of Titus, as those are the things that Paul wants him to emphasize. And these all go under the heading of setting things in order and bringing about good works and sound doctrine in these churches that were in their infancy and bringing them to maturity. All right, so that's the the first thing here he needs to do. He brings these churches to maturity in their understanding and in their action, in their understanding and in their action. All right, so what's this second part here of appointing or ordaining elders in every city? Appointing and ordaining elders in every city. Titus will serve as some level of initial leadership and direction. You read later in the book that no man is supposed to despise his authority. But Paul does not see Titus, one man, as a long-term solution. Instead of seeing a single person over multiple churches, the biblical vision is a team of men with certain qualities recognized by Titus to lead that congregation. So instead of one man over a multitude of churches, you have a multitude of men recognizing and leading and governing a single church. A congregation that does not have elders may do many great and wonderful things and have wonderful people, but it's not a mature church as we see in the Bible. It should be part of the target. The need for elders is great because people need direction all the time. People need direction all the time, and all people need direction. Everyone needs people in their lives that care about them, that they can trust for instruction, for correction, and for direction. And that's why local shepherds in every church, local shepherds in every church are so necessary. And I want to point out here, the New Testament witness is unanimous in the expectation that there are a plurality, that there are elders, plural, in every single church. Elders, also called pastors, um, shepherds, bishops, overseers, and others. More than people needing a shepherd. Shepherds as well themselves need shepherds. Even people who are spiritually mature need people to come alongside them to make the best decision possible and to have safety in multitude of counselors. Even people who are spiritually mature need people to admonish them and correct them and and to instruct them and to direct them. And so we want to say a model of a church where one person is perpetually in charge is both unbiblical and destructive, both to the leader and to the church as well. And so the biblical vision that we see here is that Titus is going to go around and he'll provide some short-term leadership, but his goal is to get to where he's not in charge anymore. It's where these elders can do these things so that no longer does one man have this incredible task of trying to, to care for the souls of dozens or hundreds of people, but you have a team of men taking care of that together in the grace of Christ. Thank you so much for joining us today on Begin in the Word. It's our prayer that just as you've begun today in the Word of God, you live out today in the Word of God.